Social media is like heroin. It's addictive, but it makes everybody completely miserable. And a lot of research goes into figuring out how to make it even more addictive. In this video, I'm going to show you four easy things that you can start doing to be proactive instead of reactive. And I mean that a little differently than most people do. Most people talk about being proactive or reactive in terms of are you going and looking for things to do like you're looking for extra tasks to do at work or are you just waiting for things to go wrong and then reacting to put out the fire when something goes wrong. And for sure being proactive in that way is obviously better than being reactive. But what I mean here is that you're proactive as in you're going and looking for your own opportunities rather than expecting somebody else to lay it out all for you. And what I mean by that is are you looking through your email hoping to find some opportunity there? Are you looking at job boards at LinkedIn, scrolling through news feeds, trying to find some opportunity that somebody else has given for you? Or maybe you're scrolling through YouTube trying to find the perfect video that's going to give you that opportunity that you always wanted. Or maybe you even landed on this video because you were doing that. And there's nothing wrong with doing that sometimes, but like I explained in this video, if you're just waiting for opportunities to come to you that somebody else created for you, well that's a pretty sure way that you're going to be broke for your whole life. So I recommend that you watch that video first if you haven't already, so pause this video and watch that one. But when you're ready, I'm going to give you the four things that you can do so that you can be proactive instead of reactive. The first thing you can do is just to recognize that you can't be proactive all the time. It's just not really humanly possible unless you're like some amazing super genius maybe, but for the rest of us it's just not possible. So you can plan accordingly. Because it's much easier to be reactive, and chances are, even if you're a super disciplined person, you're probably going to be in a reactive state more often than you're going to be in a proactive state. So if you can recognize that that's true, then the next time that you are in a proactive state, you can recognize that you're in a proactive state and then leave instructions for yourself to follow when you're in a reactive state in the future. So you leave organized reminders for yourself. When you're in that proactive state, you have this whole big picture, you have this strategic roadmap laid out in your brain but then when you get into that reactive state you forget about it so make sure you write it down in as detailed a manner as possible and you leave exact next steps so let's say you have this big plan to start a company well start a company uh, just doesn't really work when you're in reactive state it only works when you're in proactive state so when you're in the proactive state figure out what you need to do next the exact next steps that you need to do. So maybe you write down, oh, I need to get a logo created, uh, I need to create a website, I need to create business cards, right? And put those down is individual steps to do because when you're in that reactive state in the future, it's much easier to see those written down and say, oh, I need to create business cards, right? Because you're reacting to your list. You're using your reactive state to actually help you. Now the best way that I've found to do this is through this organizational framework called Getting Things Done. And if you think that's a stupid name, then I agree. But the framework is awesome for taking advantage of those proactive states and being useful even when you're in a reactive state. So this is all based on a book, which I'll put a link to in the description so you can check that out. And then I actually implement it through an online list building tool called Remember the Milk. And I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Remember the Milk just lets you make a whole bunch of lists and it's stored on the cloud so you can access it from your phone, or your computer, or your iPad, or wherever you happen to be. So that's a complete method for organizing your thoughts. And then one other thing that I do is that at the end of every workday, I write down everything that I want to get done the next workday. Because for me, usually by the end of the workday, I'm in a pro pretty proactive state. I'm, I'm reactive at the beginning of the day and I get more proactive as the day goes on. So at the end of the day, uh, I have my head full of everything that's going on and I have a pretty good idea of what I need to do the next day so I write it down and then the next day I'm still kind of half asleep and then I read my list and then I know exactly what to do. So that's the first thing you can do. The second thing is to get yourself out of that reactive state as early as possible as you can in the day. And this has more to do with what you should not do than what you should do. And what you should not do is wake up in the morning and look at your phone and check your messages or check your email or check your Facebook notifications or check your Twitter notifications or check how much money you made overnight. That is completely keeping you in that reactive state. So here's what I would recommend doing instead. First thing is that you have a morning routine. And people have all sorts of different things that they do for their morning routines and that's fine, but I would recommend that you include either 
meditation or exercise or some of both. Exercise is great because it gets your energy up, it gets your blood flowing, and meditation is wonderful because it gets you into that optimistic state, right? If you're meditating, especially on what you want to get done that day, your mind gently starts to go into that proactive state. And then once you finish with your morning routine, go to that list that you wrote the previous night and do one of those things on that list. So make sure that you do all of your morning routine and do one thing on your list from the night before, before you do anything that's reactive, like checking your messages or checking how many new YouTube subscribers you got or whatever. And then the third thing you can do to take that even further is to limit your reactive activities to certain times of the day. So obviously I'm I'm not saying that you shouldn't check your email, you shouldn't check your Facebook, you shouldn't check your YouTube subscribers, whatever it is. I'm just saying that those are necessarily reactive activities, so you should limit how and when you do them. So I recommend that you have a specific time of the day set aside for each of those things. And if you can lump them all together, then even better. So if you say from 11 till 12, I'm going to check my email and check my Facebook and check my Instagram, etc, etc, etc. And then just do that once a day. And that's kind of hard at first because probably you're used to checking these things compulsively throughout the day but it's just not that important there's almost nothing somebody can send you that can't wait 24 hours and even if you don't set a specific time maybe your schedule isn't all that fixed so it's difficult to set a specific time but at the very least set a specific number of times that you're gonna check this stuff so maybe you say I'm only gonna check my Facebook notifications once a day and then stick to it right don't open Facebook 15 times in the day, right? You're wasting so much time, you're distracting yourself every time you do that. You're putting yourself into a reactive mode. Do it once per day. Or if you wanna give yourself twice per day, that's fine too. Just make sure that you stick to whatever it is you commit to. I limited myself to once per day on Facebook and once per day on Instagram because I found myself constantly just compulsively pulling out my phone and, and clicking on them. Like every time I had a, a second down, uh, I, you know, I removed my focus on whatever I was doing and sometimes I get sucked into it for 30 minutes, an hour at a time, and I was just wasting so much of my day. So don't do that. Have some discipline, have some time set aside, or at least have a limit on how many times that you do that per day. Okay, now the fourth thing you can do, and this has served me so well, is that you have some alternative plan for the reactive behavior. You have some alternative plan in advance. By the way, if you're finding this video helpful, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button because it makes the YouTube algorithm like me more. Hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button because it makes me feel good about myself and it means that you won't miss any of my future videos. So for every situation, you want to have something productive that you can do instead of the compulsive reactive behavior. So if you followed my first suggestion, you've already got one of those things, right? Because when you open up your computer and you're tempted to go check how much money you made last night or check your Facebook or whatever on your computer, well now you have this list of the things that you're supposed to get done today that you made from last night when you created that list. So that's the alternative. Instead of whatever silly reactive behavior you have to do on the computer, now you look at your list and you react to that list in a productive way and do the thing that you put on the list. And then you can have something planned in advance to do when you're on your phone. So if I'm on my phone and I'm tempted to go look at Facebook again, then instead maybe I'll reach out to some new business contacts. And by the way, I do have an exception with the Facebook and Instagram once per day rule, and that is if I'm doing something directly work related. So if I'm posting a live video on Facebook, for example, or if I'm reaching out to people to sell something in a Facebook group, that kind of thing, that doesn't count. For another thing I've been doing recently was downloading eBooks to my phone. So I just found this awesome guide to copywriting. It's written by a guy who's made over $40 million doing copywriting. I think it's amazing. So I'll, I'll put the link in the description in case you want to check that out. Or even take an online course on your phone. So when you're staring at your phone, and you want to go to Facebook, instead you open up that online course and learn something useful. So if you want a good online course that will teach you something useful, I'll put a link in the description to my own Digital Nomad University, which I think you will love. All about how to go from working a normal corporate desk job or working in an office or a store or whatever you do where you're tied to a location to instead making money from your laptop or making money from your phone and traveling the world. So check out the link in the description if that interests you. And then another thing that I love to do is if I'm at home, whenever I'm tempted to go onto social media or do something that's basically a waste of time like that, I'll read a book instead. 
Or maybe I'll watch a video or listen to an audio program that will help me to achieve my goals in life. And the key to doing that successfully is to have that material available so you have that video saved on your phone or you have that book easily available. I use a Kindle. I use a Kindle on my iPad and I've bought a whole bunch of books that I haven't read yet. So I have no shortage of reading material. Books are amazing for that because usually a book has a lot of content, whereas if you find like a 10 minute YouTube video, you can have that saved in advance, but after 10 minutes, it's like, okay, now what? A book will last you a lot more time, and if you need some ideas for good books to read, check out some of the other videos on my channel because I recommend a lot of books, and I've even got a bunch of videos talking all about some of the best books that I've read and the best points that I got from them. So that's a good place to start if you need something good to read. And this is also a great thing to do if you have some downtime or you're waiting for something. So uh, if you're waiting for the bus to show up or you're waiting for your girlfriend to do her hair for the hour and a half, right? You could read a book or you know have something in advance that's productive that you can do instead of mindlessly scrolling through your stupid Facebook account for the 20th time today. Life is so much better when you're in this proactive mode. And I don't just mean that in terms of the results that you get. I mean the way that you feel throughout the day. If you're actually doing something good for yourself, you feel so much better all the time than if you're just kind of mindlessly addicted to a Facebook feed or to an Instagram feed or Twitter. Social media is like heroin. It's addictive, but it makes everybody completely miserable. And a lot of research goes into figuring out how to make it even more addictive. And TV is the same way, right? I mean, Netflix is better because at least with Netflix, you can choose what it is that you want to watch. And they call it television programming, which is totally accurate because the television is programming your mind. So you have to quit it like a drug addiction. And just like quitting a drug addiction, it is difficult at first, it's painful, it requires some discipline, but it's every bit as worth it. The world is so much better once you finally kick the habit, once you finally quit. And I've noticed a funny thing that happens when you start being proactive instead of reactive. When you stop sitting around and waiting for the opportunities to come to you, that's when they actually do start coming. Maybe that's how you found this video. Now, if you want to know the best tips from a absolutely mind-blowing book that I read that goes deep into the psychology behind this stuff, check out this video. And if you liked what I had to say here and you think that other people might benefit from it as well, please share this video. And of course, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe.